Hi again. Once again, thanks to Noel from Mexico for ordering and paying for these videos. And of course, being able to share it with you. Uh, don't forget like, subscribe our content and hope you're going to like this new part with opening repertoire for white where white goes with the first move d4. I just have to explain you how to play the, against the Austrian defense. It's d4, d5, c4 and c5. This opening is very uncommon nowadays, but from time to time I see that some players do it against me as well. Amongst the top players who actually do the Austrian defense, uh, I uh, saw that Mamajarov uh, uses lately this opening for black and he even scores well. Uh, the only guy who crushed him was Wesley Saw. It was in rapid uh, game, but if Mamajarov uses this opening on regular basis, it has to be at least considered to be a good surprise by black. I'm going to show you uh, one very easy approach for white. I'm not going to uh, give you like any of these crazy refutations uh, that were uh, found their place in books of uh, Larry Kaufman and Boris Sebrich, even though most of these positions are just fine for white. Uh, I'm about to show you like a very simple approach that is going to give you uh, slight advantage in many of these positions a much better uh, game but also it is going to give you a very very uh, pleasant game uh, queenless type of middle games where uh, there is only one side who uh, pushes for win and that should be white so let's get started and uh, after d4 d5 c4 c5 uh, you know my approach. Who doesn't hold the center? Take on d5. Uh, that happens, and I'll repeat again, in Baltic defense. That happens in Austrian defense. That happens in uh, Chigorin defense. That happens in second move knight f6 martial uh, variation. So you, whenever they don't control the center with e6 or c6 playing queen's gambit, or a slab, just take on d5. Uh, here after c takes d5, uh, they can play c takes d4, uh, queen d5 and knight f6. Queen d5 and knight f6 uh, are basically part of the same approach. Those who play uh, c takes d4, uh, they make mistake. Uh, I checked the game between Michalevsky and Landa, uh, played in Ajaccio, uh, in France 2007 and the, the white should go with queen a4 check. The po problem is they can't play knight c6. They have to either cover themselves with the knight or the queen. Uh, Landa played queen d7. Queen takes d4. And look what's happening here. Uh, white is up a pawn. And black has now uh, serious difficulties to get a pawn back. He played e6 to challenge that but after knight c3 uh, knight f6. And now Michalowski just went for e4. The problem is he didn't only, uh, you know, like defend this pawn on d5. He also threatened with attempted bishop e5. White was easily winning and he won eventually in like a very small number of moves. Uh, instead of c takes d4 for black, I'm of opinion that black has to take by queen or to play knight f6. If they take by queen, you play knight f3 and they take on d4. Uh, for example, Everett in his book says go with knight c3. And he even gives an exclaim mark. Uh, lately, I've seen lots of games played in this variation by Mamajara. Uh, so after like queen a5, knight takes d4, knight f6, uh, knight b3, uh, queen c7, g3, to play bishop f4, but also to develop the bishop on g2. Uh, and after like e5, bishop g2, bishop e4, bishop d2, castles, castles, rook d8. Mamajarov had very nice score with black pieces here. Even according to the engines, this position is considered to be fine for black, unless white goes with some queen c1. It was even done by Valiaho against Shakhmar Mamajarov and 
Majora still managed to win, of course, because he's a better player, but uh, according to the engines, this is just slightly better for white. If you do like what most of people do, the most logical work C1, they just go with knight C6 and black should be fine. I don't want to show you these positions because lately, in comparison with the analysis of Evrach and uh, Larry Kaufman and their books, uh, nowadays things have changed a little bit. Uh, and after like queen takes d5, knight f3, c takes d4, I'm just suggesting you to take by queen. Taking by queen always offers you a very pleasant type of queenless middle game. Uh, if they take, you're just going to recapture. You now threaten to jump with the knight on b5. Uh, so they have to play a6. You play knight c3. Uh, lots of guys make mistake here and play e5. Guess what? You just do knight d5 and you threaten knight c7. You threaten knight b6 and they're just lost. It's very easy to make this mistake with black pieces and uh, don't forget about this miniature by white. They have to play knight f6, in which case you go g3. Uh, this is going to be the main uh, position, and let's just use the old Russian word tabia uh, for uh, this opening, because from this point onwards, we actually have to analyze uh, this Austrian defense for black. So how do we reach it after, uh, instead of black takes third move, queen takes d5, how do we reach that position if they play knight f6? Nothing. We don't take on c5, because taking on c5 is just bad, uh, because they can uh, go with uh, e6, and when you go with e6 and play d6, they will just go give check, take on c5, take on d6, and everything is just easy. So don't go with that. Just play knight f3, and you go once again into a good uh, version of this position. Now, once again, some guys in their books gave like e4, a pawn sack to take on c5 and to learn like, for example, Everett gave this line in his book, and that's correct. White is a little bit better. But I believe that a uh, plan that I'm about to show you is way easier for playing, way easier for understanding. And if you ask me, it's just uh, going to be like more beneficial for your chess because uh, you're not going to uh, have to memorize like all those uh, openings, games, and positions. All you have to do is just to understand how to play this type of position. So after knight f3, c takes, queen takes, queen d5. You don't want to take on d5 to help him developing his pieces. You will develop your piece, attack the queen, force him to take on d4, and now you threaten to jump on b5. When they play a6 to stop this, you just go with g3. It's very important to remember this. Uh, white's concept, that you want to uh, develop your bishop on g2, put it on the light square, and put it on this diagonal. Bishop on g2 uh, could do a lot of harm to white pieces, uh, to black pieces, and black can play knight to c6. Simply, if they play knight c6, you just take and create, like, once again, three pawn islands. Unlike you, who have two pawn islands, this has to be easily better position for white after bishop g2, bishop on e3, gf4, g5, and rook c1. So after g3, they all play e5. And here, I'll show you like two approaches. If white goes with knight on b3, whatever he gave in his book, and which I believe that is absolutely the best continuation for white, or just going back with the knight on c2. Uh, I remember when I played against Grandmaster Gleck, uh, Igor Gleck, uh, good uh, and strong GM, uh, I put this knight on c2. Uh, they all play uh, bishop d7. Bishop d7 because they just want to oppose light square bishop on g2. Bishop g2, bishop c6, of course, Never help your opponents to keep developing their pieces and play short castle. I, I mean, don't take on c6. Don't help them develop their um, uh, pieces. So play castle. After bishop g2, king g2, we're going to discuss about this position. I like this knight on c2 because I'm threatening to, to play bishop g5 and afterwards to go knight e3. 
followed by knight d5 or knight f5. I remember somebody uh, played against me knight c6. I played bishop g5, bishop e7, rook f to d1, castles, and knight a3. This is my game against black. Played on play chess and blitz many years ago. And I was easily, easily much better. I'm, I'm even close to say almost winning, believe it or not, because he can't stop. For example, he played rook fc8, knight f5. I took on e7, uh, took on f6, and uh, play a very simple type of end game here after rook d1. And uh, here I made a nice move, knight e4, uh, where he collapsed after knight g8, rook d8 knight c5 and i did knight b7 and won this game afterwards so this was very nice presentation of this line and this knight c2 move because idea behind knight c2 is to play and put my bishop on g5 take on f6 bring that knight from c2 to e3 afterwards and control both d5 and f5 squares after bishop d7 bishop g2 castles bishop g2 king g2 in my opinion, they have to play h6 to stop bishop g5. But then we have bishop e3. What's the difference now? The difference is now I want to go with this bishop on d6 at some point. For example, knight knight e6, rook d1, bishop e7, rook ac1, and bishop e6. I'm literally opening up and freeing up the e3 square for my knight on c2 to come there and go and jump on either f5 or d5. Uh, secondly, I play bishop e6 which helps me in terms of preventing rook d8 and opposing uh, my rook on the d file with rook d8 by black. And finally, after king g2, I'm of opinion that the flexibility by black is fine, knight bd7, but after rook d1, bishop g5, and knight to e3, uh, Sasekirian played against Brodigam in Berlin, uh, Berlin 2015 game like this, and after knight f5, he could have got an almost uh, practically and and technically I don't want to say winning game but it's much much better but it's close to be like technically winning for these top guys uh, instead of all these variations with knight c2 I also want to show you knight b3 that Maurice ever covered in his books I also made like a deeper analysis uh, on knight b3 and it turns out that the game for white is very easy after knight b3 they go bishop d7 once again you shouldn't go with knight c6 and bishop e6 then just bishop e3 once again you want to stick this bishop on b6 if needed like long castle let me just go with bishop e6 uh, having my nice bishop and controlling the rook and the d8 square and the d file this way and if bishop d8, bishop b6, once again with a good control of the d file and possibly some knight c5. Sorry, knight c5 and white is just better. After knight b3, they also go bishop d7, bishop g2, bishop c6, castles. They also take. And once again, uh, you have a threat of bishop g5. The, it's not like a classical threat. It's usually a good move if the knight comes to c6 and they don't have this flexible knight. But also keep in mind that this knight now on b3 can jump on a5 and do that, do some harm to this pawn and to the queen side of black. So when they play knight bd7, controlling both, making the bishop g5 not to be that useful and making like knight a5 not that useful at the moment, you put the rook on d1 placing the rook on the open file, bishop e7 and bishop g5, provoking h6 and going back to e3. Um, bishop on e3 doesn't look as good as when the bishop uh, when the knight uh, is on c6. You can't play bishop e6 any longer, but you actually keep challenging your opponent to play knight g4. Knight g4 leads to disaster because you just bring your knight into the center and control just everything. I won a game in blitz like this. My opponent played knight f6. And then when I played rook ac1, I had a threat of knight a5, knight f5, uh, rook c7. And I literally won this game in like five moves from here. After like rook c8, rook ac1, castles. Very nice way to uh, claim the advantage, knight d5. So I know that you like and prefer 
uh, to have like opening advantages with the queens on the board with some miniatures with lots of tactics but here that's not a case and that's why I told you you might like this lecture a lot unlike other of my lectures where I usually show you some craziness here you just go with this calm approach and you just keep out playing your opponent after bishop c1 bishop c1 knight, knight is hanging uh, they can't move the knight because e5 pawn is hanging and when they play like this knight a5 simple approach and i just hope you enjoyed this video uh, guys uh, once again thanks to noel from mexico for uh, paying for these videos and allowing them to uh, be published here on the channel hope you're gonna uh, have the same approach as well come up with some donations and uh, uh, keep up uh, following the channel and uh, follow me on Twitter as well. Thank you for everything and see you very soon. Bye-bye, guys.